After using literally the same design for nearly a century, I'm sure this new 2023 Lenovo IdeaPad 3i has a all new design. Can't wait to see it. Oh no, 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 please be a different design. Please be a different design. Please be. <laughs> you just had one job, Lenovo. You just had to change the design. <laughs> What's this? There's something in here. Fair enough, I suppose. Meh. Lenovo takes the old saying, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, quite literally, as they have not changed the physical appearance of the IdeaPad 3 series for quite some time. Now, the good news here is that they have refreshed it with the latest internals, and so this model right here is rocking Intel's 13th generation 1315U series i3 chip with six physical cores. We also have a 512 gigabyte solid state drive. To my surprise, we have LPDDR5 memory with eight gigabytes total over here. We also have Intel's UHD graphics. Furthermore, we have Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth 5 on board. And finally, this is a 15 inch full HD display and it comes with Windows 11. Now, while not a whole lot has changed on the surface, there are a number of notable changes on the inside and a few physical ones as well at that. So we're gonna go through all those in full detail and give you guys all the information you need. Let's get started. In terms of packaging contents, you can expect a very primitive cardboard box here with the basic Lenovo branding, but again, it's a budget series laptop. Now inside, behind a ton of protective packaging, you will of course find the Lenovo IdeaPad 3i itself. Surprise, surprise, it looks very familiar to previous models. Past that, you do have a 65 watt charging adapter, and it is worth noting, unfortunately, you do not get USB-C charging out of the box, even with the latest 2023 variant. You also have the wall outlet charging cable piece, and then finally you have the documentation. Now at first glance, the IdeaPad 3i really has not changed all that much. Like I mentioned, everything from the straight linear edges to its conservative business-like design all remain very much the same. They even offer the same abyss blue color we saw with the previous generation. However, technically speaking, this laptop is 10% slimmer than the previous iteration. A change again, you can really only notice if you keep the old one next to it. Now, with that said, this laptop does have a full plastic build from top to bottom, so you won't get any premium feeling or looking elements. However, it does have a modest weight of 3.52 pounds, making it lighter enough for a 15 inch laptop to carry around. Starting with the top side, like I mentioned, you have a simple and clean textureless plastic finishing over here. It doesn't feel cheap or finicky, but it's nothing really to glance at either, though that abyss blue color does have a nice unique touch to it. And then of course you have some basic Lenovo branding. On the sides of this laptop is where you will find all the IO port diversity. So on one side, you have the DC charging port, you have a USB-A super speed port, you do have a rather dated HDMI 1.4 port, a very primitive USB-C Gen 1 port, a headphone jack. Now on the other side, one more USB-A super speed port. And to my surprise, you have a full size SD card reader, which is always a welcome addition. But as you can see, that port diversity hasn't really improved all that much, but I suppose for a laptop of this caliber, it's fair enough. The bottom side of the laptop also has a plastic finish like the rest of the body. You will notice you have a nice long linear air intake vent, though it's worth noting that you only have one cooling fan, so a lot of it is just for, I guess, dramatic effect. But aside from that, there's really not a whole lot more to see at the bottom aside from rubber grips to keep the laptop in place. Upon unfolding the laptop, you will find a decent sized amount of palm rest space. And of course, it's a full plastic inner chassis, though it's worth noting that abyss blue color gives it a far more premium feel than there actually is. Now you have a surprisingly smaller trackpad than you would otherwise find on most 15 inch laptops, but that's not really a problem here because this is such a nice trackpad otherwise, despite having a plastic surface finish, you have super tactile clicks. You'll also find there's a very, very limited amount of flex over here, which surprised me honestly, and the clicks are really well calibrated and tuned. This is 
exactly what a nice trackpad should be like, even if it doesn't use fancy materials like a glass surface. So I gotta give Lenovo full kudos on that. Keyboards have always been my favorite thing about Lenovo laptops. And this one right here is just as good as any other Lenovo machine out there, if not better. So you still have those super well labeled keycaps with a reasonable amount of surface area per keycap. They've also slightly improved the orientation of the keyboard to make it a little bit more user friendly. You still have a full size 10 key number pad over here and the power button doubles as a fingerprint scanner. Additionally, you will also notice that this year, to my surprise, they actually include standard backlighting even in this base i3 configuration, a feature that was previously only reserved for the i5 and i7 configurations. Thank you Lenovo for taking that feedback. Now on top of that, of course, the typing experience remains just as good as ever. You have a generous amount of key travel. Every keystroke feels tactile yet firm, and it makes for a great typing experience as you might have expected. Directly above the keyboard, you will find a top firing speaker grill. And yes, we will do a full sound test later on in the video. Now the hinge quality here is okay. So you do have a decent amount of screen wobble. And while you do get a full 180 degree tilt, it's worth noting that you want to be careful with the hinge as using it recklessly will undoubtedly result in long-term wear and tear damage. Display fitting is okay as well, so you have a reasonably thin enough chin I guess. It's not super noticeable, but it's not super sleek either. The bezels again are narrow enough for modern day display standards. And then you have a average size forehead at the very top, though at the center of it you have a 720p webcam, something that did disappoint me. I was hoping by this point Lenovo would shift to a full HD one, but I guess somehow including a privacy shutter is supposed to make you forget about that fact. If Lenovo could save the world by upgrading the display on this laptop, I feel like they would just let the world end because we still get that same mediocre display we've been getting for years now. So things start off normal enough with a standard full HD resolution. You have a 16 by nine aspect ratio, additionally a standard 60 Hertz refresh rate. Heck, you even get a nice IPS panel with decent viewing angles. Now you only get 300 nits of peak brightness. I know it could be worse at 250, but this display easily gets overcumbered when you're using it in bright daylight settings. But the real crime over here by far is that 45% NTSC color rating or approximately 56% sRGB rating. Colors look depressed on this thing. They need therapy, literally. If you are using this for Microsoft Excel, you're not gonna care. But if you're using this for photo editing or any other color sensitive activity, keep in mind this display is not designed for that kind of stuff. And that may be a deal killer for some people. Performance on this machine is very impressive. Despite having a mere U-series i3 chip, these 13th generation chips are no joke. Day-to-day -day web browsing and watching video, for example, are all gonna be super snappy as you might've guessed, but even more demanding activities like programming or 3D modeling are not only possible, they work well enough on a machine like this. Of course, I would recommend a more powerful machine if that's gonna be your daily use case. And when I really push this machine to its limit, it by doing multi-layer 4K video editing on DaVinci Resolve, to my absolute surprise, despite the limited eight gigabytes of RAM, I was still able to actually perform edits. And yes, there were occasional frame drops and it wasn't an ideal experience, but it was ultimately possible, something that I would not have expected with a chip of this caliber. Now, in terms of gaming, I was again pleasantly surprised. Games like Fortnite can easily run on lower settings at 30 plus frames per second, despite only having Intel's basic UHD graphics. Again, casual gaming is very much possible on here. While this laptop may run fast, it also runs pretty hot. So under unrealistic peak loads, we were able to hit surface temperatures right around 44 degrees Celsius. Even sustained loads yielded around 40 degrees Celsius, which in my opinion is a number that's not very healthy for a U-series i3 chip. But what really makes me sweat is the fact that we were able to hit fan noises of around 56 decibels despite having a single fan set up on this machine. And to make matters worse, the fan goes off pretty much anytime you're doing anything that's more intensive than let's say running Microsoft Word. Now, to be entirely fair, this problem seems to be rampant across all 
all Intel 13th generation chips, they run far too hot in my opinion and can have repercussions in the long term. So it's not a problem exclusive to this model, but that is definitely a concerning point over here. You have a 47 watt hour battery on here, which roughly equates to about seven hours of real world usage, assuming you're doing mostly light load activities. In terms of the sound quality, you do have a top firing grill, like I mentioned. It's a stereo speaker setup, but it's very underwhelming sound. There's not gonna be a lot of depth to it. Have a quick listen for yourself. Now, based on Lenovo's website, this laptop retails for approximately 640 US dollars. And if I'm being honest, that price might be slightly more on the expensive side for an i3 chip. But in all fairness, Lenovo definitely proves itself in the performance department. The 13th generation i3 chips are very powerful. They're doing tasks that I would not expect them to do, like the ability to do programming, modeling, and even video editing to an extent. Aside from that, I I think Lenovo's specialty remains the fact that it offers one of the best keyboard and trackpad experiences you will find in the laptop industry, even at a mid-range level that we see over here, plus improvements like backlighting and slight revisions to the IO port diversity definitely make this a lucrative laptop for productivity specialists. Now with that said, the display remains as mediocre as ever. If you are someone who's more in the creative industry, this laptop might not be the best option for you, especially when compared to Dell's 5000 series of Inspiron laptops. Now, with that said, of course, for general productivity, I can wholeheartedly recommend this laptop. And if you're looking for something that's not too over the top, has a clean yet simple design, Lenovo's IdeaPad 3 series definitely hits all the right check marks in that regard. Let me know what you thought of this review and what you think of this laptop. I'd love to hear all your thoughts. Thanks again for watching. Catch you in the next one.